Folks, thanks for being here. Carl, thank you for being here. Um, Carl has an 80-minute lecture prepared for all of us. This is final hurrah, is that right? I can right. 75. 75. Um, let me just say quickly before we get to Carl's remarks and kickbacks and celebration that being a teacher is a very meaningful way to live a life. It's a uh, it's wonderful to live a life of the mind, but in my opinion, and I suspect Carl's too, to live a life of the mind where we get to train our future colleagues to then go out and actually change the world and make it a better place. That's a truly meaningful way to live a professional life. And so I think it's very important for us in all the busyness and all the craziness that we have with exams and everything else, that once in a while we just take a moment to stop and celebrate a life and a career well lived. And we're doing that today, and we're doing that with him right here, so that we can show him the love and the appreciation and the respect and the gratitude that we have. And I've been here only three years, but you're a powerhouse, and uh, I've, I've really been uh, grateful to, to be a part of the faculty with you. Um, and we're going to miss you, but don't be a stranger, and come up here and give your 75-minute lecture. Okay. <laughs> of course I've got to lower it. Of course I've got to lower it. Thank you. <laughs> so when I knew I was going to make a couple of remarks, um, I'm the second person to do this, and the first was David Logan last semester. So I called David and I said, what did you say when you made some remarks and what should I say? And he said, you should talk about your pedagogical philosophy. <laughs> and that was a complete non-starter because if I were to talk about my pedagogical philosophy, it would make you all too happy that I'm retiring. <laughs> so instead, I'm going to just tell you three quick vignettes that just stick in my mind. Because when, when you retire, certain things, you just kind of remember certain things fondly. And I have many fond memories, but here are just three little vignettes. And the first is, the old timers will remember this, we used to have mailboxes downstairs. We all had a mailbox. And there was a czar of the mailroom, and his name was Frank Silva. And he was a wonderful guy. And he was a lot of fun all the time. And he was a lot of fun to joke around with. And he would always say, lawyer production. We are in the business of lawyer production. It's another day of lawyer production. And I was, frankly, never quite clear whether Frank thought it was a good thing that it was another day of lawyer production or a bad thing. But that's what he always said, lawyer production. So one day, I'm in the mail room, and I say to Frank, Frank, I don't like the mail you've been giving me. It's a lot of junk. I just get junk mail, mostly promotional stuff from other law schools. I want better mail. <laughs> and Frank says, has it escaped your notice that I don't create the mail, I just distribute the mail, so you get what you get and don't be upset. <laughs> and I say, Frank, you are in charge of the mail. This is your responsibility. Fix it. And I leave. Now, Frank and I never, dis had, never discussed this again. But thereafter, appearing in my mailbox with regularity were Victoria's Secret catalogs. <laughs> Vignette number two. <laughs> I'm looking for, I have a visual aid for this one, if I can find it. But I'm not ready to show it to you yet, so I'm just taking it out and hiding it so far. Vignette number two is I'm walking down the hall, kind of in front of, I remember exactly where it was, kind of approaching where the Office of Student Finance and Records is. And coming in the opposite direction are two guys, and one was Dennis Tonson, who was then Dean of Students. And you don't know him, but the old timers know him wonderful dean of students, and another guy who was a big bear of a guy, big guy, very curly black hair, very curly big beard, he looked like a bear. And we 
reach each other. These two guys are coming in this direction, I'm coming in the other direction. And Dennis Tongson stops me and he says, Professor Bogus, he says, meet Robert Healy, a distinguished member of the bar. Mr. Healy, this is Carl Bogus, who is a member of our faculty. And I lean forward, get my face as close as I can to this big bear of a guy, and I say, Bob Healy, you're good for nothing. And I thought Dennis Thompson was going to go into cardiac arrest. <laughs> I mean, I can't, you know, I, I practice a little talk and I open my mouth, but you have the mask, you can't see the expression. But he looked just stricken. He's got, he's giving a distinguished member of the bar a tour of the law school or wherever he's doing with them, but he's a distinguished member of the bar. And a member of the faculty is just insulting. And there's silence for about two or three seconds, and this guy just gives me a big embrace. And we have it for a moment, and I go off. And I hear Dennis Thompson say, oh, so you know Carl Bogus. <laughs> and Bob Healy says, truthfully and only, no. <laughs> so for those of you who have no idea, like Dennis, you know, I left out the key fact here. I screwed up my own story. One thing you had to know about Dennis Tonson, he was a New Hampshireite. He was a New Hampshireite. Now, I'm sure he stayed overnight in Rhode Island many nights, but he didn't pay attention to Rhode Island politics or Rhode Island culture. He was from New Hampshire. He a lethal lieutenant governor. He's good for nothing. Oh. <laughs> Bob Healy was a wonderful character of Rhode Island. He ran for lieutenant governor repeatedly in his own political party, the Cool Moose Party. And his, his um, platform was the lieutenant governor does absolutely nothing, has no constitutional duties, no other duties. If you will let me, I will accept no salary. I will close the office. I will fire the staff. I'll, I'll take over if the governor dies. Um, and he had all kinds of great shticks. He would announce his campaign like from a beach in Bermuda, like, I'm out here doing nothing, and if you elect me, that's what I'll do for you. <laughs> my third little vignette is, so my office is out on this little end of the faculty suite, and a couple of doors down was David Logan's office. And most of you won't know this, but David Logan had a habit of taking his shoes off and then walking around the faculty suite in his stocking feet. And so one day, I'm passing his office. He's not in there. His shoes are under his desk. And I don't know what possessed me. I ran in, grabbed his shoes, and hid them. <laughs> and then I went back to my office. And hours passed, and I actually forgot about it. <laughs> but it got to be the end of the day, and I guess David Logan wanted to go home. <laughs> and he couldn't find his shoes. Now this sounds like it's a, maybe a Carl Bogus story or a David Logan story. It's really a Shirley Staslowitz story. <laughs> because David Logan did what any faculty member does when the faculty member doesn't know what to do, which is all the time, most of the time. Shirley, how do I turn on my computer? Shirley, how do I get my voicemail messages? So David Logan goes to Shirley and says, Shirley, I can't find my shoes. <laughs> now Shirley has worked for the faculty for a long time, and she's got all of our numbers. And she thinks about this for half a second, and she says, is Bogus here? <laughs> and appearing in my door is a very determined Shirley, with kind of have a hanging back David Logan, and she says, where are David Logan's shoes? <laughs> and I say, I, I can't believe uh, I gotta watch out for David Logan's shoes. And I jump up and I run faster than they can. I go into David Logan's office. I throw the shoes back under his desk. Say, you know, his, his shoes are right here. What are you bothering me about this for? <laughs> so, what's the three? What, what's the unifying thing of these three vignettes? And is this? Here's what I'm going to miss in retirement, and it is the interaction with my coworkers, my students, of course, but my coworkers. So that's the deal. 
Enjoy the refreshments. Well, thank you everyone. Stay, hang out, and whatever you do, don't take off your shoes.